This is another presentation by My Weight World. Exercise, flexibility. The purpose of this presentation is to introduce you to some of the basic reasons for and functionality of flexibility. You will learn the definition of flexibility, types of flexibility, factors that limit flexibility, the relationship between strength and flexibility, and why overflexibility can be a problem. The definition of flexibility. Flexibility is defined as the absolute range of movement in a joint or series of joints that is attainable in a momentary effort with the help of a partner or a piece of equipment. Flexibility is specific to a particular joint or set of joints. Dynamic flexibility, also called kinetic flexibility. Dynamic flexibility is the ability to perform dynamic or kinetic movements of the muscle to bring a limb through its full range of motion in the joints. Static active flexibility, also called active flexibility. Static active flexibility is the ability to assume and maintain extended position using only the tension of the opposing muscles. For example, lifting the leg and keeping it high without any external support. Static passive flexibility, also called passive flexibility. Static passive flexibility is the ability to assume extended positions and then maintain them using only your weight, the support of your limbs, or some other apparatus, such as a chair or bar. The ability to maintain the position does not come solely from your muscles, as it does with static active flexibility. The ability to perform the splits is an example of static passive flexibility. Research has shown that active flexibility is more closely related to higher levels of sports achievement than is passive flexibility. Active flexibility is harder to develop than passive flexibility. Not only does active flexibility require passive flexibility in order to assume an initial extended position, but it also requires muscle strength to be able to hold and maintain that position. Some of the more common factors limiting flexibility include bone structure. Depending on the type of joint involved and how healthy it is, the bone structure of a particular joint places noticeable limits on flexibility. This is why age can be a factor that limits flexibility, since older joints tend to be less healthy than younger ones. Muscle mass. Muscle mass can be a factor when the muscle is so big that it interferes with an individual's ability to take the adjacent joints through their complete range of motion. For example, large hamstrings limit the ability to fully bend the knees. Excess fatty tissue. Excess fatty tissue imposes a similar restriction to large muscle mass. Condition of the connective tissue. Most flexibility work should involve exercises designed to reduce internal resistance from soft connective tissues. Finally, physical injury or disability will always have an effect on flexibility. Certain internal influences can affect or limit flexibility. These include the type of joint it is, as some joints simply aren't meant to be flexible, internal resistance within a joint, the elasticity of muscle tissue, for example, muscle tissue that is scarred due to a previous injury is not very elastic. The elasticity of tendons and ligaments. Ligaments do not stretch much, and tendons should not stretch at all. The elasticity of the skin. Skin actually has some degree of elasticity, but not much. The ability of a muscle to relax and contract to achieve the greatest range of movement. And the temperature of the joint and associated tissues. Joints and muscles offer better flexibility at body temperatures that are 1 to 2 degrees higher than normal. Likewise, certain internal influences can affect or limit flexibility. These include the temperature of the place where one is training. A warmer temperature is more conducive to increased flexibility. The time of day when one performs stretching exercises. Most people are more flexible in the afternoon than in the morning peaking from about 2.30 p.m. to 4 p.m. The stage in the recovery process of a joint or muscle after injury. Injured joints and muscles usually have less flexibility than healthy ones. One's age. Pre-adolescents are generally more flexible than adults. One's gender. Females are generally more flexible than males. One's ability to perform a particular exercise. As with most things, practice makes perfect. One's commitment to achieving flexibility and restrictions due to one's clothing or the equipment. Water is an important dietary element that contributes to improved flexibility. 
Increased water intake contributes to increased mobility as well as increased total body relaxation. A muscle's resistance to lengthening depends on its connective tissues. When the muscle elongates, the surrounding connective tissue becomes more taut. Also, inactivity of certain muscles or joints can cause chemical changes in connective tissue that restricts flexibility. Flexibility exercises primarily work the muscle's fascia because it has the most elastic tissue. Ligaments and tendons are not intended to stretch very much at all, and overstretching them can weaken a joint and cause destabilization, which increases the risk of injury. When connective tissue is overused, the tissue becomes fatigued and may tear, which also limits flexibility. Connective tissue that is unused or underused provides significant resistance and limits flexibility. Aging. With appropriate training, flexibility can and should be developed at all ages. However, people will become more flexible at different rates, particularly depending on their age. In general, the older you are, the longer it will take to develop flexibility. Aging affects our connective tissue because, as we age, our bodies gradually dehydrate to some extent. Stretching is thought to stimulate the production retention of lubricants between connective tissue fibers, thus preventing the deterioration. Therefore, exercise can delay some of the loss of flexibility that occurs due to aging. Certain physical changes attributed to aging include increased calcium deposits, adhesions, and crosslinks in the body, increased fragmentation and dehydration, changes in the chemical structure of the tissues, loss of suppleness due to the replacement of muscle fibers with fatty, collagenous fibers. This does not mean you should give up trying to achieve flexibility if you are old or inflexible. It does mean you will need to work harder and more carefully for a longer period of time when attempting to increase flexibility. Increased flexibility can be achieved at any age. Strength training and flexibility training should go hand in hand. People sometimes mistakenly believe there must always be a trade-off between flexibility and strength. Obviously, if you neglect flexibility training while training for strength, you are certainly sacrificing flexibility and vice versa. However, performing exercises for both strength and flexibility need not sacrifice either one. As a matter of fact, flexibility training and strength training can actually enhance one another. Do not perform stretching exercises for a given muscle group without also performing strength exercises for that same group of muscles. The reason for this is that regular flexibility training causes connective tissues to stretch, which in turn causes them to loosen and elongate. When a muscle's connective tissue is weak, it is more likely to become damaged due to overstretching or sudden powerful muscular contractions. Such injuries can be prevented by strengthening the muscles bound by the connective tissue. One suggestion is dynamic strength training, consisting of light exercises with weights, lots of reps, lighter weights, and isometric tension exercises. If you also lift weights, dynamic strength training for a muscle should occur before subjecting that muscle to an intense weightlifting workout. This helps pre-exhaust the muscle, making it easier and quicker to achieve the desired overload in an intense strength workout. Attempting to perform dynamic strength training after an intense weightlifting workout is largely ineffective. If you are working on increasing or maintaining flexibility, it is very important that your strength exercises force your muscles through their full range of motion. Repeating movements that do not employ a full range of joint motion, like cycling, certain weightlifting techniques, and push-ups, can cause shortening of the muscles surrounding the joints. The reason is that nervous control of length and tension in the muscles is set at the strongest and or most frequent repetition. Overflexibility. It is possible for the muscle of a joint to become too flexible because there is a trade-off between flexibility and stability. As you get looser or more limber in a particular joint, the joint receives less support from its surrounding muscles. Excessive flexibility can be just as bad as not enough flexibility because both increase your risk of injury. Once a muscle has reached its absolute maximum length, attempting to stretch the muscle further only serves to stretch the ligaments and put undue stress on the tendons, two things you do not want to stretch. Ligaments will tear when stretched more than 6% of their normal length. Tendons are not even supposed to be able to lengthen. Even if ligaments and tendons do not tear, loose joints and or a decrease in the joint's stability can occur, thus vastly increasing your risk of injury. 
Once you have achieved the desired level of flexibility for a muscle or set of muscles and have maintained that level for a solid week, you should discontinue any isometric or PNF stretching of that muscle until some of its flexibility is lost. In summary, you now have a basic overview of the importance of flexibility. Things to remember. Flexibility is the absolute range of movement in a joint or series of joints. There are three types of flexibility, dynamic, static active, and static passive. Internal and external factors that can limit flexibility include age, water, and connective tissue. Strength training and flexibility training should go hand in hand. Excessive flexibility can be just as bad as not enough flexibility and can increase your risk of injury. This has been another presentation by My Weight World.